Hey guys, I am down at the garden today because uh, the guinea fowl are being super loud up at the house. So there's a bunch of bugs down here. So if I start acting really weird, that's why. Um, I'm probably okay, just maybe mosquitoes. Okay, so uh, there are a couple topics I wanna get through today. Um, the two biggest things that I wanna talk about are, I know some of the biggest worries for people, um, how to legally inform the school that you're gonna homeschool and what kind of paperwork you need for that and also what curriculum to choose. So this video is gonna be about paperwork and hopefully um, I can get a curriculum video also done tonight. They're both pretty big topics though, so we'll see how this goes. Um, okay, so for paperwork for the school, two important things. The first one is every state has different requirements. So I live in Ohio, um, so I can walk you through exactly what the paperwork looks like for Ohio, but if you do not live in Ohio, you're gonna need to look up what your state requires. Um, some states are a little stricter than Ohio and some Texas, for example, is super easy to homeschool in. Um, so make sure that you know the requirements for your state. Um, I think most of the stuff that I talk about is probably going to be helpful to you, even if you don't live in Ohio. But um, anyway, just pay attention to what you need to do for your state. The other thing that I want to say is um, this past school year, they actually changed the requirements a little bit because of COVID. Um, and it made it easier, to be honest. So um, it's, it's not a horrible thing, but I just want to make sure that I tell you all that these things could change for this coming school year. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you the information that I have um, and tell you, you know, how I've been doing things for the past however many years. Make sure, though, that you pay attention um, if you choose to homeschool this year because I'm not entirely sure what the requirements are going to be because of the virus. But again, um, this past year it was easier, so it's not a horrible thing. Just, you know, keep in mind. All right, so all that being said, here is the actual process for applying for homework. In Ohio, you send a piece of paper to the school board, that, and you can get this paper online, um, and it is an intent to, a notification of intent to homeschool. So you fill out this piece of paper, you include an outline um, of what you intend to teach and a list of uh, your curriculum and your supplies, your textbooks that you're going to use. In theory, you get back approval from the district, so you have um, approval to be homeschooling, and that's really all you have to do. So throughout the school year itself, you don't need to do anything. Um, however, at the end of the school year then, you have um, a couple different options to assess your child's progress. So the two big options are um, a standardized test, and honestly, I don't know anybody who's ever gone that route, so I'm not entirely sure um, I think if you would want to do that, you would need to get in touch with your school district because I honestly don't even know if you can do that at home or if you, I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how that would even look. But um, the option that everybody that I know uses is to have a certified teacher um, look through a portfolio of your child's work and sign a piece of paper basically stating that they are working um, up to their, um, dang it, I should have looked up the exact wording before I did this, but basically um, stating that they're working up to their expectations is not the right word. Anyway, you have to have a teacher sign a piece of paper that says that the kid's doing okay. So, um, the, the third option is actually you can do a mutually agreed upon third option. So I guess if you really didn't want to do a standardized test or have a teacher assess your kids, you could come up with a third idea. And if the school uh, district approved it, you could do that. Um, again, I don't know anybody who's ever done anything like that, but it is an option. So um, it's at least worth mentioning. So that's the process. Basically, um, the beginning of the year, you figure out what you're going to do and you write it down along with your official piece of paper that is your notification of your intent to homeschool, which I'm going to show you in a bit here. And then at the end of the school year, you most likely would have um, a certified teacher assess your kid's work. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you the actual paperwork that you're actually filling out. Okay, so this is the front of this piece of paper. Um, school district, obviously, whatever school district you're in, school year, so it would be 2020 to 2021. Um, man, that's crazy. Name of parents, you know, pretty straightforward, whatever your names are. Address, phone number, all that stuff, pretty straightforward. Um, name and phone number of a teacher if other than a parent. Again, I don't really know anybody who's done that, but in this, you know, um, in this climate, that might be something that's happening more. So... Um, obviously you put down whoever's actually doing the homeschooling at that point. Uh, full name and birth date of children to be educated at home. Also very straightforward. I always have to add more lines because I have a crazy amount of children. But, um, yep, that's all easy. It's the back that gets a little trickier. So we're going to flip it over and see what that says. 
Okay, so the back has a lot of scary sounding stuff. Basically, all it means is that you are agreeing. Um, so the first part is what you're agreeing to teach. So it's basic stuff. Um, you know, you're going to teach math, geography, that kind of stuff. Um, you are also stating, so you're, you're checking that you're going to provide a brief outline of the intended curriculum for the current year. Such outline is for informational purposes only. So what that means is they're not supposed to deny your homeschooling because of your outline. Um, that it's just so that they have an idea of what you're doing, that it's not really supposed to be about permission. Um, that's kind of complicated and probably doesn't matter to anybody here, except to say, don't stress out about your outline. Um, again, this feels like such a big scary thing the first time you do it, and then it's so, so easy to do after that. So do not stress about your outline. So what I do, um, actually, I was going to print out one of the actual things that I've done, um, but my printer doesn't work, so I didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and talk to you about it, and then maybe in a different video I can show you um, exactly what I do. But basically, I just use this as an outline. So I write down, okay, language, reading, spelling, and writing. So I just write language. What are we going to do? So, you know, the child will blah, blah, blah. I mean, I put my kids' names in, obviously, but um, will... I don't know. I'll show you my, my actual paperwork a different time. But all I'm saying at this point is I just use these actual words on the paper um, as my outline for writing my outline. So I, under mathematics, I write what we're going to do for mathematics. Under health, um, I write something, I have something written up that I just use every year that basically says we're going to um, study health as a, as a part of living our life. I have it written up better, but um, I'll show you guys that at some point. Okay, so that's your outline. You do one of those for each child, or at least I do. So for each child that I'm homeschooling, so I will be sending in seven outlines. Um, but the thing is, it's super easy because one, I already have them written up, so I can just change them for the coming school year, but I have the basic format already done. Um, I don't have to reinvent this every year. Okay, so that's your outline. You also send in a list of um, textbooks and anything else that you're going to use. So that's just a one, one or two um, page thing. I send in one of these that includes everything I'm going to do for all of my children. So seven different outlines is what I personally do, but only one list of textbooks and stuff. Um, and again, I literally just list it off. So whatever I'm planning to do for math, just write a list. Um, okay, assurance that the child will be provided a minimum of 900 hours of home education each school year. Okay, so um, in Ohio, you are not required to actually take attendance. There are some states where you're required to actually log um, each hour that you're schooling. In Ohio, you don't have to do that. You just have to say that you're going to do 900 hours. Now, the thing is, that feels like a lot, but um, you, it, it's easy. And I honest, I don't even track our hours because I know that we do so much more than 900 hours um, that I don't sit down and write down, like, did we do two hours of school today and five the next day? Um, don't worry about that. Basically, you will be doing 900 hours. It is not something you need to worry about. Just say that you're going to do it because you are. Okay, um, assurance that the home teacher has one of the following qualifications. And then, you know, it has the qualifications listed. You put on your date, you put on a signature. All right, so the qualifications that really matter, do you have a diploma or a GED or something like that? Um, if not, then they have written down how you can handle that. Um, so yeah, that's all the paperwork that you have to file at the beginning of the school year. Um, the important thing that I want to say about this paperwork is when you send in your outline, um, nobody ever comes to your house and checks it. And the teacher that is reviewing your schoolwork doesn't necessarily ever look at that outline. So it's a really great tool for me. I like doing the outline because um, it helps me think through what I want to do for the school year. But if you get halfway through the school year and you realize everything you wrote down is horrible and you hate it and everybody's miserable, you can change it. Um, you are not required to do anything that is written down on that outline. Um, it's really just a guide for the school and for you. So don't stress about writing it down and don't stress about following it. Nobody is ever going to ask you. Um, yeah, so don't worry about that. Okay. So I think I'm going to make a separate video up at the end of the year assessment because this video is also getting all, already getting really long and that's kind of a different, different bucket anyway. So this is all the stuff that you filed at the beginning of the year and I'll 